Again, we can look at uh, this in terms of thinking about a picture this way, in terms of drawing the wave function out on an axis. So we have 1SA, and we're drawing this as having a positive amplitude, but since we have destructive interference, we're going to draw 1SB as having the opposite sign, so we have a plus and a minus in terms of signs. So that should make it very easy to picture that this is being canceled out in the middle. If we overlay what the actual molecular orbital is on top of it, what you see is that in the center you end up canceling out the wave function entirely. So this is the 1s star, sigma 1s star orbital, and what you have in the center here is a node right in the center uh, between the two nuclei. So again, if we look at this in terms of its physical interpretation or probability density, what we need to do is square the wave function. So if we square sigma 1s star, we flip the amplitude so it's all positive now, but again, we still have this node right in the middle. So if we talk about the probability density and we write that in, it's going to be sigma 1s star squared. So now we're talking about 1sA minus 1sB, all of that being squared. And again, if we write out what all the terms are, we again have 1sA squared plus 1sB squared. But now what we're doing is we're actually subtracting the interference term. So if we're subtracting the interference term, what we have here now is destructive interference. So let's think about the energy of interaction here. When we were talking about constructive interference, we had more electron density in between the two nuclei, so that lowered the energy of the molecular orbital. So bonding orbitals are down here. But when we think about where antibonding orbitals should be, it should be higher in energy. It, it's increased compared to the atomic orbitals. So we would label our antibonding orbital higher in energy than our 1s atomic orbitals. So let's think a little bit about what this means. First of all, again, to repeat, any time we see the star, sigma 1s star, that's an antibonding orbital. When we talk about that, basically what we're saying, and you can see that because of that negative interference, we actually have less electron density between the nuclei than we did when they were two separate atoms. So you can see that this is non-bonding. This is even worse than non-bonding. It's anti-bonding because we're actually getting rid of electron density between the two nuclei. And we know that it's electron density between the nuclei that holds two atoms together in a bond. So what I want to point out is that it creates an effect that is exactly opposite of a bond. You might have thought before we started talking about molecular orbital theory that non-bonding was the opposite of bonding. It's not. Anti-bonding is the opposite of bonding, and anti-bonding is not non-bonding. We can see that if we just look at this picture here. Here is bonding, and here is non-bonding. Anti-bonding is even higher in energy than non-bonding. And the other thing to point out is that the energy that an antibonding orbital is raised by is the same amount as a bonding orbital is lowered by. 